welcome to our living room. You are joining us from the Disney couch. Tonight we are watching a classic, a classical classic. Fantasia 2000. <laughs> I think this is going to be more enjoyable than the first Fantasia, which we found a little sleep inducing. A little bit, and yeah. fairly low on the Disney scale, so. Yeah. I actually had really good memories of watching Fantasia 2000. I was a young lass, I, I liked the space whales, and uh, I just thought they're, they're fun shorts that, you know, really portrayed the music well. Yeah, which is really what they were going for. They didn't have to worry about a hour and a half long plot, they just did little segments as per the original Fantasia. Uh, Walt Disney had in the back of his mind after the original 1940 Fantasia that they would keep on producing it and they would add different segments and it would come back to the theaters and would never be the same show twice. Like once every 10 years or something? Yeah, something like that. But uh, Fantasia kind of tanked at the bo box office so they abandoned that until 60 years later when Whoa. Roy E. Hello. Disney pitched the idea to Michael Eisner. It was released on December 17th, 1999. Wow. And it's called Fantasia 2000. It wasn't even released in 2000. Well, here's wow. the thing. They premiered it in theaters on January 1st, 2000. Okay. In IMAX. So Disney's pushing the envelope again. This was the first movie to be released straight to IMAX. And uh, Disney even had to build their own IMAX theater in L.A. because the only IMAX in L.A. they couldn't come to an agreement to show Fantasia 2000 there. So they spent four million on a temporary IMAX theater in Los <laughs> Angeles. So, we'll just yeah. build it ourselves. That's right. Wow. So there, we're Disney. All right. Well, let's watch it. All right. Good idea. Just before we fall asleep. Okay. Here we go. Fantasia 2000. Woo. song was in the credits. This one was way more entertaining than the first one, don't yes. you think? I think Absolutely. So, yeah. I There's think, a lot more humor. Yeah, I um, think they probably realized, uh, you know, comparing the old Fantasia, that maybe they needed to have a little bit more story mm -hmm. or stuff that made sense. <laughs> Things that people enjoy. Yeah. The first piece was a little kind of on the abstract. It was, you know, the dance of the battling flying Doritos. There was light versus dark, though. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Jaira? Which one was your favorite animation? Well, let me consult my handy-dandy sketchbook mm -hmm. in which I drew little segments of all the shorts. Battle of the light versus dark triangles and space worlds. Jazzy dude plays the drums. When your crush isn't actually an amputee like yourself. What would happen if you gave a flamingo a yo-yo? Return of the brooms that stress me out. Noah's Ark, but with Donald and Daisy. Green Girl. Tefiti. I liked the flamingo yo-yo. I think my favorite, I mean, it's kind of cheesy, but Donald and Daisy on the Ark yeah. and missing each other. It, it's just such great, um, great use of dramatic art. I like the way they did another take on pomp and circumstance. Yeah. And nothing to do with graduation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was the animals graduating from the ark. Um, Rhapsody in Blue, I think. The Gershwin song set in Depression era New York. It was a lot of fun. Uh, there was a good story there, and you know, everyone got the what they wanted in the end. And the animation was fun. You know, it was totally different, a, a totally different way of animating. It kind of reminded me of the um, all the cats join in yeah. from one of those earlier ones. I think it was Make My Music or something like, like that. What about you, Faith? What was your favorite of the shorts? Space Wales! Yeah, there's a great <laughs> animation of whales are swimming, and then the next minute they're swimming in space. And it's then they cool. go to heaven. <laughs> or something. Hey, did you know with those whales, it was all computer animated except for the eyes. Wow. They, they did the eyes hand drawn mm. because CGI at the time, they couldn't quite get the eyes right. Mm, right. So they did the eyes by hand. Did you know that there were unicorns in this movie? Oh, yeah, that was clever. In, uh, 
Noah's Ark, there was unicorns and dragons, and any other mythical creatures? I, I think, think that's it. Yeah, I think it was just a unicorn and two dragons. While the animals were getting loaded onto the Ark, they were sitting back and laughing and mocking everyone. So yeah. now we know Jokes what happened. Jokes on them. Yeah. You got the last laugh, huh? Yeah. So most people probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to see it. It's not the kind of movie that you just think, hey, what should we watch tonight? Fantasia 2000. Yeah. But I really recommend trying to find it somewhere and watching it at least once. The animations are short and enjoyable. Yeah, it is a little obscure. It didn't make a lot of money. It's not hugely successful. The first run through, uh, Fantasia 1940, um, wasn't actually all that Disney. It didn't score that many points. It only got four and a half on our Disney scale. And so let's find out if 60 years later they were able to rack up a few more Disney points. Let's see what this one scores. To the chart! Do, 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 do. Book intro. Nope. Wasn't based off of the book. Or orchestra opening. Yeah. And lots of little intervals of saying stuff that bored me back as a child, but now it was sort of interesting, some of it. Yeah, so no book opening. <laughs> Nothing. Missing parents. Wow. And the little girl who was, who was bad at ballet. Her parents yeah. were there. They just weren't there for her. She was missing her parents. They're just busy socialites. Yep. Misplaced priorities of parents. <laughs> Doesn't count. <laughs> dad with the stash. Nope. So the dad with readjusted priorities didn't have a mustache. That, that's the only dad we can think of in this one. There's the whale dad. Well, he didn't have a mustache either. I don't think he had a mustache. That would be really awkward if you slapped a big old white Disney Aww. dad stash on that whale. Oh no. <laughs> talking animals. In our original Fantasia, when we scored it, we only gave it half a point for talking animals because while there were humanoid animals in there, they had no opportunity to talk. Nobody talked in the whole thing of Fantasia 1940. So, does that mean we do the same thing with this one? No, because Mickey talked. What? Mm -hmm. Went true. up to some introducing dude and was like, hey there. Full points for talking animals on this one. Beating the original. Ding. Oh, gee, fellas. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Unlikely partnership. Nope. Nope. Is there anything in Rhapsody in Blue? Nope. Nope. Mm, working together? Nope. They never interact, really. I guess they don't. That kind of had an unlikely coincidence, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, okay, we got nothing here. Yeah. Yeah. Hidden Mickey. Ooh, there was some good hidden Mickey. And there was the actual Mickey. Yeah. Mm hmm. So we don't need to look much farther than the Sorcerer's Apprentice for a hidden Mickey because he was right there. But there were some good ones. Yeah. I think my favorite was a long shot of the Ark. And if you zoom right in, you can see a silhouette of Mickey and Minnie. I think was, my favorite was honestly the pools of light. Like, yeah. we've never seen that sort of thing be a hidden Mickey before. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, right at the beginning of Space Whales! But props to Lynn, who spotted the Mickey in the clouds without being prompted by Google. Yeah. So, good job. Alcohol. What about in yeah. the Jazzy Short? Yeah, I think that would be the only opportunity for alcohol, but... There was... Bombless coffee. Yeah. No alcohol in Fantasia 2000. No points. Witchy villain. No. What? What about the lava monster? That's not a witch. No, he wasn't witchy. Okay, but that's not of this world. Most lava spectacular is thing. part of this world. Oh, yeah. Not a giant lava winged thing. La the lava creature was representing the course of death in nature. I'm going for a literal sense here. It was pretty magical that it rose up and chased the green girl. Now, the other contestant up there is the sorcerer in The Sorcerer's Apprentice, who was definitely witchy, but I think the question is, was he a villain? He did literally nothing. It was all just Mickey being stupid. He in, saved. In just fact, the sorcerer saved the day. Just because he has big eyebrows doesn't mean he's, he's, he's intimidated. <laughs> Couch vote for witchy villain. Three, two, one, go! Sorry. I feel oppressed. <laughs> Sorry, Jai, your firebird has been outvoted. Yeah, it's ugly villain. No. I think yeah. the Jack in the Box. Yeah. Oh, oh, I would give it to the Jack great. in the Box. Big nose, yeah, and like his white chin. Yeah. You know, just like a decapitated head floating around. Just, yeah. Just like, yes. yeah. Yeah. He was. He he was a mean Jack in the Box. Yeah. Didn't like him. I mean, Jack in the Boxes <laughs> in general are yeah, scary, so you might as well funny. make it the villain. <laughs> he was a mean Jack. In the box. <laughs> okay, so are we gonna give it to the Jack in the Box for Ugly Villain? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. there it is. Bing. 
Death by falling. Yes. Yes. He fell into a fire. The evil Jack in the Box. The little legless. <laughs> <laughs> legless Legolas. <laughs> like on my Lego, Ego, Lego, Legolas. <laughs> legless, Lego, Legolas is Legless, Legolas. <laughs> that one legged uh, toy soldier like did this great ninja move and yeah. flipped the Jack in the Box into the fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Classic Disney. Yeah. He wouldn't have walked into the fire on his own. <laughs> True. Consideration. Yes. And again, it was kind of his fault because he like went for it with the sword and then mm. like did yeah. the ninja move. Pretty much exactly the same as Simba with Scar. It was like the yeah. same move. Yeah. Hit song. <laughs> no, there's no original music here. It's all classical. But well. the soundtrack for Fantasia 2000 was number one on the classical charts in July of 2000. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, and really, how many probably you know, people are buying classical music in a given month? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> all four of them bought Fantasia 2000 soundtrack that month. So, not enough? No. Not no. enough. I'm just happy that they didn't have an R&B pop version of Rhapsody in Blue at the end of this one. <laughs> Romantic duet. No. Nope. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing here. No, nope, no singing. The kiss. I'd like to give it to Donald and Daisy. Yeah. 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 She kissed him on the cheek and he did like a dance, which is, I think, dramatic enough for it to count, even if it wasn't a lips kiss. Even yeah. It was just Donald. And really, how can they kiss on the lip? They have bills. That's true. That would be very difficult. They have lips. Yeah. <laughs> And she still did it. <laughs> Donald's feet did the Twitter patient thing, yeah. so you know that that counts for something, right? That's a song, right? And I, I thought for a minute that the uh, ballerina was gonna kiss the, yeah. the toy soldier. Like, like she went. Like, she just went like. Yeah, she just did her ballet. She just move. stuffed the leggy. Yeah. Yeah. Resurrection. Well, unless you count Mickey chopping the brains, and then it just. Turn to multiple. Did we count it last? <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't count it the first time, so. Okay, what about, what about the green girl? Ah, oh, the green oh, girl. Yeah. After she was a red girl and then a gray girl and then a pile of dust. Yeah. But, but then, then she died. The, the elves breathe her life back into her because she is life. Yeah. yeah. But did she die? Well. It's a nature parable, right? Yeah. So does the landscape beneath the volcano die? Apparently not, according to Mount St. Helens. I don't know. I think it does. And then it comes back. That's true. It I is resurrected. That's the whole point of that short. I mean... That's true. Let's give it a point. Yes! <laughs> Let's find out if Fantasia 2000 beat Fantasia 1940. Okay, let's find out. So, Jaira, what is the total for Fantasia 2000? Total is 6 out of 14. Fantasia 2000. It only wound up with six points, which puts it pretty far down on the list, but one and a half points more than the original Fantasia. Pretty good. Way to improve Fantasia. Yeah. Well, and I still have lots. And still keep the Sorcerer's Apprentice in there, just as a nod to the original Fantasia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All in all, an improvement. I'm glad they didn't decide to do this every decade. Yeah. 60 years is good spacing. <laughs> so. We will eagerly await Fantasia 2060 now. So, thank you guys for watching our video. If you enjoyed it or found it entertaining, give it a thumbs up. Comment below any sort of memories or thoughts you have on Fantasia. We'd love to hear what you guys think as well. Be sure to subscribe to From the Disney Couch for more videos like this and uh, stay tuned for more exciting adventures. Thank you so, so much for watching and we'll see you later. Bye! Bye. Now can we watch the bonus feature? It today? was VHS, so <laughs> we had a bonus feature at the start. <laughs> you don't have to be right here eating yogurt so noisily. Um, there's a Jesus in my toast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Jesus spottings. Or on your grilled cheese. Oh, yeah, Our your great cheese. Lord. Uh, <laughs> Oh, great. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus.